Hi, I'm Brandon Kennedy, the Chief Product Officer at Losant. Our visual workflow engine is really the fundamental component of Losant. It's a drag and drop workflow editor that makes it easy to build all kinds of business logic. It handles data integrations, notifications, real-time stream processing, edge computing, and it even backs your end user experiences. So let's dig into the platform and take a closer look at Losant's visual workflow engine. Well, what I've got open here is an example of a workflow. And a workflow is really where everything comes together. It's a central orchestration tool that integrates with all of the devices and data and other components of the LoSAMP platform. And this is the workflow editor. So on the left, we've got all of our available nodes. In the middle is what we call the workflow canvas. That's where we drag and drop nodes and connect them to ultimately build our logic. And on the right is all of the settings and the real-time debug log. Just like all other places in Losant, usually there's a real-time log that makes it really easy uh, to debug while you're developing. But rather than dig into this workflow, let's create a new one that will trigger a notification based on one of our sensor's values. As you can see, Losant has two types of workflows. We've got cloud workflows that run in Losant's cloud, and we also have edge workflows that can run on your own devices. In this video, I'm just going to cover the cloud workflows, but most of the things I talk about will also apply to the edge workflows. The workflow I'm going to create is going to send me an automatic alert whenever the moisture level in one of our office plants gets too low. That way I don't have to think about when I'm supposed to water it in order to keep it healthy. Let's first take a look at some of the nodes that we have available. Every workflow starts with a trigger, and the trigger nodes are up here in green. Probably the most common trigger is device state, which occurs whenever sensor information is reported. Uh, but you can also trigger on those third-party integrations, a uh, simple timer, uh, even a virtual button, which is a super helpful tool when it comes to debugging and developing these workflows. We then have some nodes related to the end user experience. There's a bunch of logic nodes that make it easy to operate on the payload data or manipulate the payload in some way. Uh, we then have a bunch of data nodes. Really, this is a way to bring together all of the data sources, both internal and external, uh, together in order to make some kind of decision. Uh, then we have some output nodes. So where do you want to do once this workflow is done? It could send a device command. Maybe it sends an email or an SMS message. Uh, and then we've got some custom nodes. So custom nodes is a really powerful feature that allows you to build your own nodes and add them back to this palette of available nodes. But since in this example, I would like to create a notification whenever the moisture level of one of our plants gets too low, I'm going to start with that device state trigger. The device state trigger allows us to trigger a workflow on a single device or an entire family of devices based on those tags. But in this case, I'm just going to choose Betty the Orchid as our device. The next node that I'm going to add is a conditional node that will allow us to branch the workflow based on some condition. In this case, it'll be level of the moisture sensor. The conditional node shows a really good use case of what we call templates. And templates allow us to access information on the payload that was created when this workflow was triggered. In this example, I want to check is the moisture level less than 400. And if the moisture level is less than 400, I'm going to go ahead and send myself an email using the email output node. And as you can see, the email node is a very simple way to send emails. You just give it who you'd like to send it to, a subject, and that body can also use templates so we can send information from that payload along to the recipient. And that's all we really need for this basic notification workflow. You can see in the top right there's a save and deploy button. If I click that, this workflow is now executing and running in Losan's cloud. And whenever that device reports sensor information, it will check the conditional and send an email if it has to. I'm going to go ahead and add a debug node to this workflow as well. Whenever a debug node gets executed, it just prints the payload to the debug panel, which is a really useful and powerful tool for debugging while you're developing these workflows. So as you can see, a message just came in, and this is what a payload looks like. You can see that moisture level down here. It's currently 457, which means we don't really need to water this plant right now. But let's make this workflow slightly more complicated by instead of checking the 
most recent data point, I want to see the average of the data over the last 15 minutes. Uh, sometimes moisture levels can fluctuate a little bit, so checking an average allows us to smooth out that notification. So this can be done by inserting a data node between the device state and the conditional that allows us to query the last 15 minutes of data before we make a decision on it. And the data node I'm going to use is a gauge query. The gauge query allows us to query a single value out of the database, but that value could be an average or an aggregation over time. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose Betty the Orchid again, and I'm going to choose the moisture attribute. And the time range I'm going to choose is 15 minutes, and then the aggregation will be mean, which means I'm going to average together the last 15 minutes of moisture information. This result field, which is called a payload path, allows us to put the result of this gauge query back on the payload somewhere so that future nodes can operate on it. In this case, I'm going to put it at data.average. So as you can see, this workflow has triggered again. We still have that moisture level from before, but now we have this new average field. If we expand that, we'll see the average field includes its actual value. So the average over the last 15 minutes of our plant's moisture level is uh, 459.6. But now we can go back and change our conditional. So instead of checking the moisture level, we can check the average value over the last 15 minutes and make our check a little bit more precise. Well, this completes the moisture notification workflow. So what we've built is a workflow that triggers any time our device reports sensor information. It then goes into LoSAN's time series database and queries the average over the last 15 minutes. And then we'll check that average against some condition in order to generate an alert, in this case, email. Well, let's see some of the other features that workflows have. We first have versioning. So once we've got a workflow to a point we like it and we're ready to version it, we can create a new version of this workflow. In this case, I'll call it 1.0. Version allows us to continue development without impacting a workflow that's already in production. Next, we have workflow storage. Workflow storage allows us to store information and retrieve information across workflow runs. A common example of this might be something like a moving average. And lastly, we've got globals. Globals provide a way to add constant key value information to your payload. It also brings in application globals, so you can define information at the application level and all of your workflows will be able to access that. This is really common for things like API keys. Well, I'll end this demo back on our quiet time controller. It shows a few more nodes, a little bit more of a complicated way to use workflows. And like I said, workflows are really that central orchestration layer behind all of LoSAN's offerings. It has direct integrations to all of our data sources, integrations, the web hooks, also third-party data sources, and it really is the place where all of an application's business logic is created. And from here, I'd recommend checking out Losant University, which provides a much deeper dive into everything I've covered. I'd also recommend checking out our documentation. And if you're ready to start evaluating Losant for your organization, you can always jump into the sandbox and start building. Thank you.